Thank you, Sir Mukere, for coming on to the program. Delighted to be here. Okay, okay. Let's get this right, sir. You were the first Secretary of Finance. You were the first Managing Director of all Papua New Guinea, Managing Director of PNGBC. You became the Chairman of that bank. You became the Governor. You became a Member of Parliament. You became the Leader of the Opposition. You became a Minister. You became a Prime Minister. And you left politics and went into retirement. What happened, sir? Well, first I was born at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> and I uh, must thank Papua New Guinea for educating me to the level uh, okay. I did. No school fees paid by my parents. I was, uh, had the opportunity to, to get all those jobs, you know. So I owe Papua New Guinea a lot. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, and you uh, gave it back to Papua New Guinea? I gave it back. Um, I retired by choice uh, in 2012. Yeah. It is my personal philosophy and belief that no one person should hold on to a public office longer than necessary. Uh -huh. We have to make space for new leaders. Yeah, right. But uh, you held it for 15 them. years or so. 15 years is long enough for me. Okay. I, I thought it was enough. I was satisfied because in 1999, I managed to uh, fix the economy and uh, uh, instituted uh, yes. ma major a lot reforms. Of reforms in the financial major, major reforms, or you know, constitutional reform, political reform, financial reform, institutional reforms. You know, and I look back and say I, I did enough. Uh, I think the reforms were beginning to bear fruit. Uh, Michael Samari, for in, for instance, in our nation's history, lasted nearly ten years. Yes. That was from... Wrote on your uh, reform. Only back, only back, yeah. Uh, organic law and institution of uh, political okay. parties. So that was enough. So And I I had to go, decided that I, maybe I should contribute to the nation in a different way. Okay. Uh, and younger leaders uh, sought my advice. I would happily give it. Okay. So, so I, I, uh, I chose to retire. Okay. You would refer, as Prime Minister, you were referred as a reformist prime minister, particularly with the financial institutions. The PNGBC, I think, is a classical example of you making it what it should be, as opposed to hands of politicians in the theater. Yeah, but I was described by my very late good friend, Tony Siago. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, used to, he used to write uh, in-house, I think. Right. Uh, and he described me as the uh, reformist prime minister. That's right. And yes. reasonably, yeah, yeah. I always look for better ways of doing this, a more efficient way of doing things, rather than just maintaining the status quo mm -hmm. and continuing. You know, I think, I think the leaders must look forward. Uh, leaders must always say, can we do this better? Can this be done by someone else? Can this be done more efficiently? You know, you know but those issues are... Uh, have to be in the leader's mind, not just leave it from day to day and managed and pushed along by events. You've got to take control of events. Yes, yes. Yeah. Do you think you left Michael, Sir Michael Samare a better page to work on, uh, to go forward for the country? Part of my retiring was that the country was uh, doing very well. Uh, LNG projects were on the yes, way, yes. you know. So Peter O'Neill was very lucky. He took from Michael Samari, country that was functioning. Country, Let, we'll, we'll get on the Peter yeah, O'Neill a little bit later yeah, on. I just want your opinion yeah. on whether Sir Michael, with the 10 years and after you, had done what you thought was the right thing to do to bring the country forward. Many people say that he benefited from the reforms okay, okay. that I, I instituted. Do you think he has? I think so. Okay. I think so. All right. I, I did contribute. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then, of course, Peter O'Neill took over from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You obviously don't see eye to eye with Peter O'Neill on, on a lot of fronts. Michael Samari left Peter O'Neill with democracy that was functioning. Parliament that was making laws. Uh -huh. Public service less politicized. Mm -hmm. Major institutions of state operated properly. Corruption, very little. Uh, economy running. LNG projects on the way. That's what Peter O'Neill inherited. Now, in the last five years, Peter O'Neill has changed 
the character of Papua New Guinea. Okay. The character that was helped shaped by Michael Samara, Julius Chan, Pai Swinti, Rabin Amayu, and I. And the change is for the worse. It's for the worse. Papua New Guineans are talking about they don't like what they are seeing. They don't like what they are witnessing. They don't like what they are experiencing. But more importantly, the Prime Minister is not doing anything to show them that he's, he's going to correct these problems. Papua New Guineans are afraid and uncertain of their future. Okay. All right. I've given you that little bit to just to mm -hmm. swallow it, just to take it in. Mm -hmm. Then Peter O'Neill says, uh, yeah, sure, Michael Somari had a good platform. He had a lot of money. There was growth, some nine plus percent growth. There was something like eight billion kina that was surplus. It's not there. Well, ask Peter O'Neill, you know. It was... Peter O'Neill says it wasn't there under Somari. I mean, Peter O'Neill was trumpeting around the place saying the nation was growing at 13% GDP. You know. The revenue base was there. Foreign exchange was there. Tax base was there. But Peter O'Neill has spent them all. Uh, but he's more than spent them all. He's but, isn't, but isn't he spending it in the right places? That's the yeah. other argument in education, in some of his pillar policies that he keeps repeating, aren't they the right policies? Schools now are not getting the subsidies in full, even now. Even Port Moresby General Hospital, there's no medicine. Yes. If there's medicine, it's fake medicine. <laughs> medicine you know. Roads and bridges, the major infrastructure, highlands, highway, you know are not being maintained, and yet we're destroying Elro Beach. You know, we're, pretty, we're building new structures and not maintaining what we've got. That, that's, that's the problem, you know. And Apex Center. I mean, Apex is a meeting of leaders for maybe five hours. Yeah. What are we going to do after that? <laughs> What are we going to do after that? You know, uh, it's a glory project for him, yes. So they're not being spent in the right places. Okay. Mm. Sir McCary, I'm compelled to ask you mm -hmm. this. We've got to move forward. We've got to move forward. Things have got to happen. Yes. Sometimes they're done in the right way, sometimes in the wrong way. Yeah. But I guess we have to move forward. And uh, isn't that what governments are for? Yes, governments are for. But we, the sheep of state, MV Papua New Guinea, is facing very strong headwinds, very strong headwinds. And if the captain, Captain Peter O'Neill, doesn't change the present course, we are heading for the eye of the storm. Okay, okay. All right, you've re-nominated for Mosby yep. Northwest and you want to come on board, yep. you want to change things that you feel are yep. not right right now under mm -hmm. O'Neill. Mm -hmm. That, that is fundamental for your returning? I, this is a very corrupt government. I described it as a heartless, like an octopus. Uh, its tentacles are in every crevice, nook and cranny, with the smell of money. Uh, corruption has never been at this level before. The major institutions of state, you know, Treasury, Police, Auditor General, Ombudsman Commission, Fraud Squad, have been tilted sideways to facilitate corruption so that government can grow a garden of corruption. You know, it is now to the point where we cannot go on. We are heading a very strong winds. Uh, we've got to change it. That's oh, one. Okay, okay. You have strong 
feelings about that, you have strong beliefs on that, you want to win Mosby Northwest to get into Parliament and see things you think are wrong. But you can't ask just Makere Morauta. You have to be part of a political party. You have to be part of a group. How are you going to come I, and change things I the have, way you think you can? I've chosen deliberately to be an independent member. Okay. Uh, that is my point. Independence can't be prime ministers. No. But independence can get together okay. before election of prime minister. All right. and, uh, independence have a choice of either individually or as a group can join a political party before the election of prime minister. Okay. Yeah. okay. But I, I'm also not, I mean, I have been prime minister. You know, uh, my motive is to collect some independence, join those parties that are like-minded. Okay. To replace this corrupt government. Okay. But of course, you would like to be prime minister. If I am given it, I would. Okay. You know, but I, I would work under any prime minister. Well, let, me, uh, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. PNG party, of which you led, it is your party. Why aren't you going back to it? I also believe uh, that young leaders should be given opportunity to, to grow. Okay. Yeah. okay. My going to PNG party, you know, I, you know, I'll overshadow uh, a leader. You know, because of my standing, you know, and that to me is not fair. You know, I mean, uh, if, if people should be allowed to. Politics in Papua New Guinea is such that you can get angry with somebody, but the next day you're friends. Peter O'Neill asks you to come on board with him. No way. Will you? <laughs> no way. I will serve any prime Even minister. makes you prime minister. Well, that might be different. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I would say any, any prime happens. minister, but not him. Yeah. Oh, uh, the next parliament. Should you, should you not get in? What is your outlook for the next parliament for the country? One of our choices, really, I mean, uh, really two mountains to climb. The first one is yeah. the mountain called Northwest. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's up to the Northwest people now uh, to, to, uh, to help me climb. If I don't, the satisfaction that I go with is that here are the problems I see. I am willing to help. I offered myself. If you don't want me, thank you. That's fine. I tried. Having tried, it gives me satisfaction that I've offered myself with my experience and my commitment to help uh, with others. Okay. So if I don't win, I tried. That's a fair point. Mm -hmm. So Makera, we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds. Anything you want to say? Anything that you want to tell your voters, your public? Your vote <laughs> is the power you have. And it comes around every five years. It's power to change what you don't like. Yeah. So exercise it properly. And you're just not voting the next government. That vote is also an investment in your future and the country's future. If you have a good company running now, we can have profit and dividends. If you have a good government, then future is promising, not only for us, for our children. So exercise that vote very carefully, consciously, not only for now, but future as well. So, McKenna, thank you for coming on the program.